okay hi guys back i got my big cup um and i just wanted to show you what your resin is going to look like uh, when you get it in a kit it's going to one's going to say resin one's going to say hardener the hardener does look a little bit yellow but don't worry it dries clear um and for you when you're going to do it you're just going to pour these both into the into the um cup and you're going to just scrape them out with the uh stir sticks that will be provided um, so you don't have to measure anything. It's all pre-measured. And so for this kit with two layers, it's going to be, you'll get two sets of these. So they'll be four all together. So be careful when you're doing it. You want to look for one that says resin. I don't know if this is an auto, but that says resin. And this one says hardener. So make sure that you're mixing the right things together. Now, I'm starting with my five ounces. I'm putting a little bit less than what you guys are getting in your kits, just because I think it's a it's good to have a little extra, and I think 10 ounces is, a, is enough for this size. And now this is the hardener. And then here comes the most boringest part ever. You have to stir this for three minutes. I won't make you watch me stir at all. Um, I don't know if you could see in there, but there's like stringy stuff. Um, that needs to all be stirred in until this is clear. You want to stir it rather slowly, not quickly, because if you stir it quickly, you're going to end up with a lot of air bubbles. And we are going to torch out air bubbles, so if you do end up with a lot of air bubbles, don't worry about it too much. I torch them out, but you're, with your hair dryer, you, you are going to um, blow out any air bubbles. If you happen to have a heating gun, that works too. Um, I just use my, my torch to pop the bubbles and then my heating gun or my hair dryer to make the effects. Okay, so I'm going to pause you for three minutes, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I have mixed my resin for three minutes and put them in the four different cups for the four different colors that we are going to be using. And as a public service announcement, I feel it's my duty to tell everybody, when somebody calls you and asks for your social insurance number, nah, don't give it to them. Especially if they say they're from the police and people are frauding you. Yeah, my husband, he's dumb enough to fall for that. Yeah, so now he has to deal with scammers. Oh, I can't help but laugh at him. Okay, so this is the silver gray. I don't have much left. I'm going to have to order some more. Hopefully I can save enough for the one package. And I'm going to just put it in this lightest gray. And now with the paint, this is the pewter color, and I love this color, so I do use it a lot in my paintings and in my resin work. But the thing is that you can't put more than 10% of volume of a color into a paint or into a resin because the resin will harden up. And this is a new bottle, so I have to stir it up. Usually you have to stir this up anyway. Now, there's quite a bit on my stick, and I think that's probably going to be enough for this. So, I'll scrape it in and, and see. Yeah, definitely enough. So, it's that nice pewter color. It's nice and metallic-y. See about the silver here. Now, I may end up like sending you a liquid silver. Um, I do have nice liquid silver. You can mix it with white if you're wanting a more of a color like this. Now the black I'm going to use in the big one. Look at this gorgeous black. Look at how it is so shiny and reflective. I love this color. I'm going to put a pretty big scoop in there. Probably way more than I need. 
but I just love the color so much and the sparkles. It's going to give the painting a nice glitter. Now, another thing that you may want to do is to paint this before you put some resin on it. So, especially when you're doing resin, and especially with the first layer, which is why I often, for beginners, suggest the second layer, is because along these sides here, um, it is not going to cover well. You'll see the white right through it. Um, so it took me, that that painting that um, that we're doing a copy of, was one of my first, and it took me two, maybe even three coats to get the colors on the sides that I liked. So um, it probably is prudent just to paint the side black as one option, or as a second option, if you know where you're going to put your white bands and your gold, black bands and silver, you can kind of mark them out and then color that area and the side um, with where you're intending to to put your colors and I don't have any intended space otherwise I would do that I just kind of go from yeah this looks good here like I'm not organized when I'm doing now here's the white powder and it's flying everywhere and it also has a nice shimmer to it. Now, if you're using alcohol powders and you're wondering why didn't, why not alcohol powders? Why all makeup powder? Um, it's because the alcohol powder, um, alcohol inks tend to be more transparent. So we want stuff that is more opaque or harder to see through. Um, and one other thing that I found. Um, later and did not use in that original black and white painting is uh, something called Resi Blast. I'll, I'll include a little few drops in your um, kit if uh, you can use it or not. Um, you just want one drop per cup. And the reason for this, it's kind of like silicone in painting, whereas it could give you some cells. You don't want to put too much though. I'll do two drops here because there seems to be a little bit more. But it can make some pretty cool effects. Now, um, with the rocks, what rocks am I going to use? Some of these, um, they're, they're pretty cheap. They're just like crushed mirrored glass. Probably use those. Sometimes I dye them black just for um, some difference. I also have these. I didn't dye these black. These just came kind of bronzy black. I don't know if I like them. I don't know if I'll use them. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to start first with black. And I'm just gonna do like a random shape. Just start here. Now with your hands, gloved hands, you wanna kinda widen this band up and along the sides. And where else do I want to add black? Maybe in this corner here. And I want to get it all down on the sides. Okay. And I think I'll do one more band this way. And we want to go around all of the corners. And 
then I'll just scrape the rest of the black right in here just to get this band a little bit wider. Sorry, I know you can't see too well with the corner I'm working on. Now I'm going to change these gloves because they've been in black. Another pair of gloves. Okay, I'm going to put a strip of pewter here. up here and I'll do a thin strip here So instead of using gloves, maybe a, a stick is easier to uh, spread it around a bit. We want to fill this gap here. Yeah, I'm probably going to add white in between these two layers to make um, a little bit of a, an effect. Make sure we've gotten all our sides, that's important. Unless you plan to frame this and you don't need your sides, then I would have recommend taping it. Looks like this is it. Oh, here comes my puppies. Excuse the noise. Okay, and I made sure I had all the sides here and here. All right, so now we're going to do this silver. Oops, this silver. I'm gonna try and fill this most of the space up here. And a little bit of it up here. Okay, so for this silver, I'm going to try and spread it along over to the black. Don't worry if it mixes too much. Because we are going to mix the colors when we do our um, trick with the hairbrush, or not the hairbrush, hair dryer <laughs> okay now of course these can this kind of uh, painting could be used with any colors you don't just need to have these colors but they do seem to be popular Okay, now I need to get some of this silver down here. Okay, and I'm going to try and get this silver over to this pewter line.
Okay, so see how it's easier to use your hands in some cases. All right, so um, I hope I don't have to mix more resin. I almost forgot to add a drop of my opaque white. Um, it's a casting, it's opaque, it makes lacing. Um, I'm just putting it only in this white color. You can use it or not. It's up to you. It'll be packed in your kit though. It makes really nice lacing effects. And it did, it did make it a little bit more white, but it didn't take the shimmer away. Okay, so this whole corner has got to be white. And I'll spread that around. This has got to be white. Again, I'll spread that around. White here. And white here. And I'll just let this cup. I just left the cup just upside down to let all of the white come out and I'm using my glove here now it is a good idea to save a little bit of um, resin clear resin to put on top of your rocks um, once you put them down Just to keep them in place so none of them fall. Okay, and go right here, let's get to the sides. I wait here to do the sides that's great Now, when I initially did this painting that's similar to the other one that I have up on my Etsy page um, that I created this kit for, um, I don't think I did much blow drying on it. I think I just left it as is and maybe took a, a stick and kind of dragged the colors along. Um, so that's definitely an option. But because I put that casting in the white, I want to see how it turns out. So I am definitely going to um, hair, hair dry it. First, because if you have a kitchen torch, use it. Uh, I don't have any to send with the kit yet. I've got lots on order, um, but I haven't gotten them yet. Um, but the heat from the hair dryer will pop all the bubbles. I just, I don't know, it's just my habit to pop them beforehand. Okay, I'm gonna get my hair my hair dryer or I'm gonna use a heating gun. So I got my heat gun. Now for your hair dryer, you're going to want to have a, like one of these little 
those things shape. If you don't, it's okay, then just hold your thing right up and down. But because I have this, I'm gonna use it on an angle. So just gonna start here. You want your hair dryer on high, but the heat, if you can change it um, a little bit lower. So um, I 
could keep working on it or you could um, on yours uh, just to get more of this kind of pattern here um, but that's not necessary um, there are a couple spots that I hair dried um, clear like down to the canvas usually the canvas will always just self level um, but I'm just going to help it out a little bit So you got two extra ounces, you should be able to do this without any issues, um, like I'm having here with just not quite enough. Um, along the sides, I'm having some issues with the colors not coming down and little patches of, of the uh, canvas showing, um, which I'm trying to patch up right now. And now we're going to add the, the uh, rocks. Now, you can have any color of rocks. I just happen to use these ones for that last painting. I used that and crushed glass, and I didn't like that bigger crushed glass, so I'm not going to use it on this one. I'm just going to put it in a little cup here so that I can control the flow. Now, in a little cup, you want to squeeze this. And decide where you want yours. So I'm going to put it here because there's no, there's nothing really here that's, you know, no lacing that's really noticeable here. So I, I will put some there. And this will stick to the side if you take your time and put some on the side and push them in. That's the important thing is pushing them into the side. Sometimes they will fall. But some of them will stick. <laughs> my husband's telling my son of his idiotness. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put a little bit here. So, get some rocks on the side. This is only if you don't plan to frame and you want to kind of make the picture um, on all sides. Then you would want to do this. Otherwise, don't, don't put it on the side. If you plan to frame, just leave it. Okay, where else should I put it? I really don't want to block this white area because I do want to try and push it a little bit further. Huh, I'm having the difficulties. Well, I think I'll push the white area one more time and then I'll put the sprinkles there for the glass. of a difference so that's okay we'll just put some and we can push them over and stick them to the side now look at this this is pretty well done with one layer the only thing I don't really like is um, a couple of the edge spots where, where the color didn't come up good. But I could probably fix that with um, the resin that has dripped off the painting. So, I mean, you can definitely do this in one, in one coat. The reason I give you two is because I know a lot of beginners have a, a harder time kind of um, working with resin. I know I did. Uh, the first time I made resin, 
I stirred it until it said clear. It says stir till clear. So I stirred literally for 45 minutes waiting for it to be clear. I did not realize that it meant clear as for um, the actual resin. And I thought that the air bubbles were clear. So I stirred until the stir stick wouldn't move again. And so I had a lump of resin in my cup. Yeah, so not not too successful on my very first try. And then when I was trying to make like an ocean scene, I totally messed it up by um, blow drying all this ocean scene stuff until it, all of the colors mixed. And yeah, it wasn't very nice. It wasn't it wasn't a good job. That's for sure. So. I've learned a lot over the years about resin. If you're one of the lucky few that get it the very first try, then give yourself a hand on the back because you deserve it. Um, I do see here on the canvas board that maybe the white was too thin. Oh, I'm going to have to put something there. Maybe I, took, I have a little bit of black left, so... Just another little streak of black. Go. Now you'll notice um, that the 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 glass kind of disappears in the resin. Uh, so that when that happens, then it's good to add some more glass. Oh, so where did I put my cup? Right here. Just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm just going to blow this out a bit, this corner here that you couldn't quite see. Sorry about that. There we go. I'm sorry I didn't get the coal thing quite in focus. I know I need a new tripod thing for my phone. Um, I'll take you in for some close-ups uh, and, and that'll be it. And then you have to let it dry for about 16 hours before you can touch it. Um, like overnight if you should be good to touch after overnight. Um, I always think of what else I have to tell you. Oh, and if you do want to do the second coat, um, within 16 to 24 hours is the best. If you are, if it's past that, you didn't get to it, um, just lightly sand the surface of the resin so that the new resin has something to stick to. Um, I'm trying to think of any other things. Yeah, this side here is giving me some issues. This is why I did two with that other one. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this around and get to the other side. You don't really need to watch that. I'm just taking my finger and and you use, use a gloved finger, of course, uh, and just kind of, kind of smearing the resin that has fallen onto the puppy pad to, to, the, to the actual canvas. And anyway, that's the end of the video. Um, of course, if you're going to do a second layer, you want to do it the same. And uh, before I go, I'm not digging this, so I'm going to blow dry it out again. Uh, there must be a slant somewhere. That's the other thing you really want to focus on is getting a um, level surface.
Well, I hope it stretches back down to where it's supposed to be. I think I might erect it there. Um, but the resin should shrink back down. It's just getting a little tacky now. I'm just going to use my torch just to um, heat this up enough that it's going to want to play again. Okay, so I'm going to turn it around, and that's the end of our video. I will work on this area to get rid of that white spot, um, and I hope that you have great success with your painting. Please share it with me. Um, please like and subscribe on my YouTube video. You can watch me on the, um, or catch me on Facebook at The Art of the Poor, also on um, Instagram, The Art of the Poor. You can find my website at www.artofthepoor.ca and I have an Etsy store, of course, The Art of the Poor. No spaces in The Art of the Poor. So that's it. Um, and please share your work with me. Let me know how, how the kit worked for you. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.